to Playbook for Performance, the official podcast of Shauna Corden, the Joan of Arc for corporate healing and performance. Join the quest to make work fun again by preparing leadership for engaging workplaces. And now, your host. Hello and welcome, friends. I'm Shauna Corden, and I'm glad to have you here on the Playbook for Performance podcast. Our mission is to make work fun again by building better leaders. This month is all about the coach approach. If you have a specific question on coaching, email us and we can add it to our social media responses. Drop a note to podcast at shaunacorden.com. On to today, what is a coach approach? Well, we certainly didn't do ourselves any favors by naming ourselves after an existing profession. We definitely do share a lot of attributes with sports coaching, but it's not the same. So let me start off with an official definition of coaching from the ICF, the International Coaching Federation, which is our governing body for the profession, and a couple of amplifications. So the ICF defines coaching as partnering with clients in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. The process of coaching often unlocks previously untapped sources of imagination, productivity, and leadership. So let's pull this apart. Our first verb, partnering, this means partners. Coach and client are equals. It's not a superior subordinate relationship like you might see with a mentor, teacher, or sports coach. Thought-provoking. We're coming from a Socratic method of asking great questions. We focus on open-ended, future, and goal-oriented questions. We're not the reporters trying to figure out when, where, why, how. We also look at context, how clients see themselves and how they see the world. Creative. We want to leverage gifts, talents, skills, and networks to solve challenges with growth in mind. How we can solve not just for this particular situation, but any others that may be like it. Personal and professional potential. We look to the present and future for the whole person. We don't focus on fixing the past or fixing something broken. Our therapist friends are the professionals for that. A big portion of our work is eliminating what's holding people back, what Jack Canfield calls releasing the brakes so that our engine can move as designed. We unlock sources of imagination, productivity, and leadership. The coach is a partner completely oriented to the client's goals. We don't have our own agenda. We uncover assumptions that are being treated as beliefs. And our questions don't just uncover what it would take, but who they would need to be, the values that would be honored, and the dreams that were unspoken for fear of judgment. We take clients from where they are now to who they want to be, better creators, better leaders, better humans, not for us, but for themselves. What we don't do, we don't advise or promote a particular method. We don't mentor. We're not acting as subject matter experts saying, here's how I did it. Do it my way. We don't teach. We're not promoting subject learning. And we don't provide therapy. Our efforts are not geared towards healing the past. And finally, we don't judge. We accept clients where they are and we meet them there and practice curiosity through and through. We partner, sharing when asked if appropriate. We celebrate growth and achievement, both process and milestones. And it's personal, vulnerable, sometimes messy, and all directed by the client's goals. Could you use a trusted partner, someone to help you increase your creativity, productivity, and leadership? Get your life to where you want it to be? Be the person that you want to be? Schedule a sample session with me by emailing shauna at shaunacorden.com. Over the years, I've had some amazing clients transforming industry and themselves. What makes an amazing client? An ambition, 
One with a bit of fear, something they haven't done before, something aligned to their goals of importance to them. We break down their goals into behaviors, habits, chunks, activities, something far more manageable. We can get deep, but we also have lighthearted moments that shine a light on amazing opportunities we had never imagined at the outset. In our closing, we cover where we started and the journey. What were the ups? What were the downs? What did they learn? What do they know they want to bring along in their toolkit for the next journey? We celebrate. I've had my own journey. My coach was one of the first people I'd want to call to share a win. How things went. What didn't go well. How to make it different. Every great coach engages a coach. They know the power of the relationship. Occasionally, I have the client who doesn't approach the relationship fully. They've been recommended for coaching. Maybe their 360-degree survey pointed out some areas for improvement. They want to appear as if they've accepted the opportunity, but they're really checking the box. Can I change their mind? Sometimes. It really depends if they're motivated. Do they need to change for someone else, or do they want to change for themselves? And what happens if they don't? If their habits and behaviors remain the same, are they under threat? Or will the organization or maybe their family members put up with the way they are, accept their flaws, especially if they make a show of effort by going through the motions? These clients who do this, they don't have a successful change because they didn't allow themselves to be vulnerable and authentic. They were not willing to question their beliefs. Early on in my coaching career, I was the chair of the internal coaching community of practice. We conducted a survey across all levels of coaching experience, from the rookies all the way to the master coaches who've had over 2,500 hours of client experience. We also questioned what level of people they were coaching. Were they individual contributors? Were they C-suite, et cetera? And across the board, it didn't matter with the experience, the level, the number one factor in the success of coaching was, was the client willing to question their beliefs? So when it comes to coachability, that's the first thing that I look at. Are they willing to question their beliefs? So for those who I can convince to create a hypothesis, be willing to engage in experiment to prove a result, not attached to the result. They're willing to get curious and try a few new behaviors on. Those become my raving fans. They transform from that skeptical, reticent participant to an eager player. So this brings us to our tool of the week, the coach approach. So what is the coach approach? I'll break down the simplest model I know called the GROW model. We teach it in a lot of leadership programs And I think it's the easiest way to understand the coaching conversation. We start with a goal. That's your G. What is it? Why do we want it? And then we go to reality. That's our R. What's today's reality? Where are we starting from? What's the metric? Cash flow, free time, you name it, in relation to the goal. Then we go to options. That's our O. What are all the ways that we can reach that goal? And play with variations. What would be the most fun, the least expensive, involve the most friends, take the shortest amount of time, develop you the most, add a credential to your resume, be the most spiritual. Be sure to ask the questions in your options that honor your values. After exhausting the options, what is the way forward you've chosen? And that's our W. What will you do and when? So that's a very simple breakdown of the GROW model. And I'm going to ask you to play with it. The coach approach uses a model and questions, asking instead of telling to find solutions. And across all my students, I've got lots of attorneys, financial advisors, physicians who come to coach school to learn how to use coaching skills. That's the number one challenge for them. Their entire careers, they have been paid to use their brains, their knowledge, their experience, their talents, to give answers, left instead of right, A instead of B. 
And we're asking them for the first time in their careers not to provide answers, to ask instead of tell. So here's your field work, because coaching without action isn't coaching. It's just entertainment. Practice this GROW model in your conversations, both your goals and your conversations partner's goals. See how much more possibility you find in the coach approach versus your standard reliance on personal knowledge and providing answers. Let me know if I can provide a webinar teaching this model to your team by emailing me at shauna at shaunacordon.com. Each week in the podcast, I like to highlight a leader doing it well in the news or from a listener and one that had a wobble. And if you'd like to nominate your organization, please email me at shauna at shaunacordon.com. This week, I want to highlight those organizations who decided to sidestep the mess at the ports and found alternative ways to continue to place inventory in their stores and warehouses versus sitting on ships at sea or stuck waiting for loading, unloading, and trucks. Prior to this supply chain challenge, I believe most companies thought, this isn't broken, let's continue to do it as we always have. And some companies trusted the process would resolve itself. Yet other companies challenged this at the first yellow flag. And when those bottlenecks began forming, they found other ways to keep their supply chain moving. And those companies will have earned the trust of their customers and keep them beyond the holiday season. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, give us a rating, and tell your friends. If you'd like to hear more about a topic that would engage the leaders in your workplace and make work more fun, retain your talent, please drop us a line at podcast at Until next week, take good care. Thank you for listening to Playbook for Performance. To learn more about Shauna Corden, her consulting programs and tools, please visit her website at shaunacorden.com and follow us on social media at Shauna Corden.